Hi everyone, Sarah B. Hansen here today. I'm so excited to teach you this lesson. It was part of my watercolor and wine lessons that I offered, I think it was last spring, um, and it was really a fun class, and I thought it would be great to do as a free lesson for you all today. It's called Rainbow Trees, and it's so much fun. This is great for kids too. Um, this is a great beginner lesson. Uh, and it's just, it's colorful, it's beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that fun? You can make yourself little cards, make a card to send to somebody um, in this time. I think it'd just be a great idea. It's, it's beautiful, bright, spring, summer, happy colors. So, um, we have, I, I have this card, I always paint on the back of my card. So this is again, 300 pound watercolor paper, hot press, but you can use 140 pound or whatever you have. Um, the cheaper paper, really cheap though, it will not show the colors bright and beautiful though. So you might want to try to go with 140 pound um, watercolor paper at the minimum weight. Um, and then I've got some colors squeezed out here on my water, watercolor palette. I've got a cobalt green, or, or sorry, cobalt teal blue. This is Daniel Smith. Um, I've got quinacridone coral, Daniel Smith again. In fact, all these are. Uh, new gamboge. Uh, Serpentine Genuine, the green, French Ultramarine Blue, which is going to be our blue choice here, and Aussie Red Gold. Um, but you can use any colors you have. Um, I like to do just kind of a rainbow pattern, so starting with the yellow, merging into kind of an orange, going into green. I didn't do purple this time, going into green and then eventually ended up into a blue. So they didn't really go in the exact um, rainbow order, but it's it doesn't really matter. So you just use whatever colors you like to use and experiment with a bunch of different colors. Um, so are we ready to begin? Okay. So to begin on this painting, um, we do a little drawing first. And the drawing is basically, it's really hard for you to see, but I have drawn a rectangle here in pencil, very lightly. And then I've come up maybe a quarter of the way, perhaps maybe a little less than that, and drawn a line across the bottom, just a straight line. And that line is going to be the line where the trees come in to the land, okay? A short distance up from that, very, very short, and I'll show you what that is going to be, is going to be a line across the bottom. It's gonna be the bottom of the trees. So it's basically kind of an undulating line going in and out. It's just a guideline. And maybe you wanna put a couple of trunks down here, just very lightly indicating where they might be. And then at the very top of the rectangle, again, kind of an undulating line, is going to show the top edge of your tree. And the trees might push out past the border if you want them to. If you don't, that's fine too. Just keep them inside the border. So you've got your very light guidelines, okay? And then we're going to be moving fairly quickly. I want you to also have on hand some table salt and a little bit of a spray bottle, just a regular spray bottle like that. Okay, have in mind what colors you're going to use first. Here I used um, New Gamboge, Aussie Red Gold, Quinacridone Coral, um, Cobalt Teal Blue, Serpentine Green, and Ultramarine Blue. So I had all those colors ready to go before I started my wash. That's pretty important. You want them hydrated. So in other words, spritz them up with water if they're cake colors or get them freshly squeezed out. Have them ready to go. You want them to be nice and sloppy, okay? And um, really have a lot of pigment in them. So what we will do first is on dry paper, and you're gonna move quickly. You don't want these washes to dry in between, okay? So you will wet your brush. This is a number 12 round brush, sable brush. You're gonna wet it and get your paint nice and hydrated. And over here, see if you can see this all right. Move this a little bit. I'm going to pull into my new gamboge. And we're gonna get a lot of water in that so it's nice and sloppy, but we want to have a lot of pigment too. We want it to be homogenized 
we want this pigment to be able to run and be very wet. If it's too dry, it's not gonna run on the surface of your paper. Okay, so don't worry about um, having this be perfect. You're gonna dab some color on here, nice and sloppy. Don't worry, leave holes if you want to. Um, in other words, little holes of paper in here. Come down close to that line and quickly move to the next color. Rinse your brush off. This has to be wet, remember? And I'm going to grab some Aussie red gold here, get it nice and homogenized. Kiss this color right here. So kiss it right next to there. Let it touch that yellow. But don't worry about it being, um, you don't want it to be dry and you don't want to mix it. You want to just kiss the color next to it. Rinse it off and I'm only moving a short distance across the paper so you have room for all your colors, okay? So now I'm going to grab quinacridone coral. I'm going to grab the color and get it nice and stirred up so it's sloppy. But remember to move fast. You don't want that color to dry over there, okay? So a little bit of red. Keep an eye on how much paint you have here because you want to finish your colors out over there. So kiss that Aussie red gold. A little bit of red. Rinse your brush off. Now, this is about halfway, okay? Now we're going to get the cobalt teal nice and stirred up, and this will be fun. Coming over here with my cobalt teal, I'm not touching the red quite yet, painting that teal, and now I'm gonna grab the red, because it's, it's very, the red's gonna be moving into that pretty quickly. Coming down to my branches, a little bit of that teal in there, okay? And now I think we'll do serpentine green. So, Get this nice and stirred up here with a lot of serpentine on my brush. And right next to the green is my serpentine. Right next to the cobalt, excuse me. Okay. And quickly now, I will grab, um, I think this is ultramarine blue, that's right. And that's going to go right next to um, my green. So again, kissing it right next to it. Bring it right down to the bottom here. And don't worry about some of that splattering out. And now, what's going to be fun, this is the fun part, I'm gonna tip this up a little bit, take the end of your brush, so what you wanna do is have this tilted, and at the end of your brush, the end of it, not the brush part, draw little branch, little, um, um, what do you call it? Trunks, yeah, trunks of color pulling those wet dabs of color down into the landscape. And just touch that landscape line, okay? So you wanna just basically bring that color down in here. All right, so now we've got some trunks going on, which is super cool. I love it. Okay, now what we wanna do, gotta grab some more trunks there. Before all this dries, and this is where the magic happens, Damp your brush, dry it off just a touch on the sponge, tip your paper like this, tip it so it's got it about a, um, not quite a 45 degree angle, but the paint runs. And then following that line, you're going to just pull your brush straight across the bottom. And you see how those colors move down. Isn't that awesome? Grab, uh, sorry, rinse off your brush and do it again right down here at the bottom of that bead. So the colors go ahead and come right down into that. Isn't that fun? You can just see it almost looks like a lake or something. Isn't that awesome? Okay, and then I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit more of that green down here. So I'm just dabbing. I, I feel like we wanted some of that green to come into this area so that we have that color coming over here as well. Okay. Now, what we want to do is stand this all up again. I probably boogered that up, but that's okay. Now, what's kind of fun is take a couple of your colors. Don't get crazy on this, but take a couple of your colors. I'm going to grab the yellow, and I'm going to spatter both on the yellow side and over here on the blue and the green. Rinse my brush off. Dab it across the sponge. Let's get some of this um, cobalt. So it needs to be fairly wet, okay? 
and splatter again. So what you're doing is you're just basically tapping it on your finger and allowing those splatters to go here and there. Rinse your brush off, maybe a little bit of that red. I'm thinking that would be fun. So we're basically just livening this up a little bit. Okay, rinse your brush off, set your brush aside, and then very, very lightly with your squirter, you wanna go across the top of it. One squirt, it's gonna give it a little bit of texture. And then I'm gonna show you something here. We're going to get actually some table salt. This is where you have to be a little bit um, delicate, okay? So you see how much table salt I have here? Not very much at all. And I'm going to pinch it and then just sprinkle it across the surface of my paper. Pinch it and sprinkle it. So you don't want big globs in certain areas. You just want a little bit of that salt on the surface, okay? Now, you're going to allow this to dry. Actually, you're gonna blow dry it or allow it to dry. Okay, once you've dried your paper completely, and I'm, I mean really, really dry, bone dry, okay? So there's a little bit of salt left on there and you'll see that it's made some fun patterns in your um, paint. As long as your paint was wet, it'll make really fun, salty patterns where the pigment is moving away from the salt fleck. So right now, before you do anything else, you will want to brush the salt off. So basically just taking your hand, maybe over a trash can, and brushing that salt off. So you want all those little salt granules to be completely off of there, okay? Just like that, all right. Now, take a sharpie this is a fine point sharpie here and i use black and you can find your tree shapes so you're basically going to draw little tree shapes all along here and you want to find little trunks down at the bottom and your um you're gonna find your tree trunks and your landscape and the edges of the trees. So continue with all your trees along the whole entire um, painting. Okay, so as you can see now, I've gone through and drawn, um, found trunks and little whole shapes in the trees. I've outlined my trees, I've given the ground a line, and I've put a little border around the whole thing. Um, you can come in and maybe glaze it, so add another layer of, you know, your red if you feel like it's a little bit too faint, or, you know, put some other colors in here if you want to. You can add another layer if you want to. Just make sure it's very dry and that there's no salt left on your, um, on your paper before you add that glaze. Um, but anyway, wasn't that fun? Here's this one that I did earlier without talking, and <laughs> here's this one. So you can play with a bunch of different colors. Uh, you can have fun with anything you have, really, paint-wise. I mean, you can make it like all blue, all different color blue, or blues and greens, or yellow to orange to red. Um, or rainbow colors, whatever you wanna do. So um, I encourage you to experiment and do a few of these. These are just so much fun. Um, the little salt texture is awesome in there and um, the splattering makes it just free and happy and, and easy to do. So I hope you will all enjoy this. This is Sarah B. Hansen, I'm teaching you art today. I hope you all enjoy your day and stay well. Be happy, my friends. Bye-bye.